Welcome everybody. My name is Mike Cirillo. I'm back here tonight with Joshua, Keegan, and Nick, and we have a very special guest tonight, uh, Zach, also known as Floor of the Dwarf on the Discord, the Tawn DeLorean. And Zach was the winner of our giveaway for the Clan Ren Box from the last episode. He sent in a list, and we're going to feature it on the show. Fortunately, our schedule's aligned, and Zach's actually going to be on here to talk about it with us. So, this is going to be the start of a four-part series that we're going to do here, where we're going to actually go over some mirror lists. For the first three episodes, we've done faction v faction. There hasn't been any kind of mirror. Tonight, we're going to do some rebel on rebel. We're going to do imperial versus imperial next week, and then continue down the chain for the next couple of weeks. So we're going to skip our hot take segment again this week and jump right into the meat of the episode with the guest. So let's actually go over the list that Joshua, you decided to bring tonight to oppose Zach and Keegan. Why don't you go off that? Happy to do it. Uh, tonight we're bringing Red Player with a uh, 797 point count, 3 point bid, 9 activations. Uh, Luke Skywalker commanding with Force Push and Jedi Mind Trick. We've got Sabine in there with my favorite offensive push, uh, Ascension Cables, and they don't lo leave home without a Darksaber. 3 sets of Rebel Troopers with a DLT 20 and a backup Rebel Troopers uh, with a Medic. Uh, and then the centerpiece of this is uh, going alongside Sabine, Clan Ren with Tristan Ursa, of course, and Situational Awareness to keep those crits away. Uh, rounding it out, uh, two Commando Strike Teams with the Sniper and no extra upgrades. Yeah, and that comes to nine activations for tonight, correct? Yep. Uh, that'll be fun. Uh, Zach, what did you bring for us? Uh, we have a Rebel List at 780 uh, with 10 activations with a huge 20-point bid. <laughs> uh, we have Leia leading it with just strict orders on her. We have a Naked R2 for the operative, the classic three Naked Rebel Troopers. And then the real uh, meat and potatoes of the list, there's the three Mandos, uh, all with Beskad, Tenacity, Recon Intel, and the Jetpacks. And then two Tawns, both also with Tenacity. Coming in at 10 activations with a 20-point bid. I think this is the most tenacity I've ever seen in a list. I did run a Sabine Luke triple Wookiee one time with four, but I've never been able to fit five. <laughs> this is fantastic. So tonight we are actually going to take place on Starkiller Base. Um, Ellis debuted this for season, I think it was season five of Invader. Yep. Um, Nick Keegan and I have all lost games on it, so <laughs> it's uh, near and dear to our hearts. But Nick, why don't you kind of tell us a little bit about the map that you'll see on the screen here? Um, yeah, so there's a lot of area terrain, um, all of it's light cover for the most part. Um, there's two large line of sight blocking pieces, very large, um, near the center of the one near the center of the table and one a little bit off to the right there. Um, not a lot of line of sight blockers in the middle. Um, a lot of the line of sight blockers and heavy cover on the outsides. So uh, a list with tauntauns, um, it seems really good. <laughs> Luckily, we have a couple of them tonight. Uh, Joshua, do you have anything to add? Yeah, one interesting thing about this map, uh, like Nick already touched on, is the amount of uh, area terrain that's here, which is going to be really good for the Tauntauns. There aren't many small barricades here, but that area terrain, even though the very center looks quite open, um, there's going to be a lot of cover for those Tauntauns crossing the board. Uh, two things to mention. Um, in the very center, there are some uh, buildings that look like they're about six by six, in si or a little bit less than that, three by three in size. Those are um, a little bit taller than height one in certain areas of it. So it's gonna be really tall line of sight blocking uh, terrain. If you happen to be starting on the right side of the board, on the left side of the board, uh, their hill uh, encroaches the center a little bit further out, but there isn't any line of sight blocking terrain once you get off of that hill and two things that we should keep in mind that we didn't touch on yet all of the area terrain is light cover and open no matter what kind of unit is moving through it um, so everybody is going to have that speed to trooper base movement through it and if you look in the top left hand corner you'll see a little set of what looks like trenches and those trenches are actually difficult terrain to move over the barricade portion but are open when moving through it and open when leaving through one of the like the gateways so if you do pick that corner and get saddled with something like a major offensive, you've got a little bit of flexibility to actually get out of it. So now that we've talked about the map, we've gone over some of its idiosyncrasies. Nick, what board edge do you think we want to go with? And oh. we're going to talk about the blue pick from the top or the bottom, the top being the little Hoth turret in the center with the trenches in the left-hand corner. Um, yeah, the, uh, the top. Um, I usually take the top. I like the... Uh, 
the large piece of terrain, the line of sight blocking, um, I like the placement of that a little bit better than the other side. Um, otherwise, uh, it's kind of a crapshoot, but uh, I usually take the top, and it's always failed me, so maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> Joshua, what do you think? Uh, so normally on this map, I prefer to have the bottom side here, um, but it, that's just because of the type of deployments I normally play. Um, well, I'm normally playing long march, I'm normally playing advanced positions and rollout, so I prefer to have an open area for my armor to get out. However, with Tons uh, and the deployments uh, that uh, Zach has brought as the blue pair, knowing he has hemmed in there, knowing he has battle lines, you have a lot more line of sight blocking terrain closer to your edge of the board if you were to pick top. So again, normally I prefer bottom, but in this case, since I'm not playing the vertical game here, we're going to go top. Egan, do you tend to agree? I'm actually going to differ a little bit, uh, and just to confirm, top is the edge uh, with the um, with the trench in the corner, right? Correct. Okay. My, I think the picture I'm looking at is inverted, so I'm, oh. I'm simultaneously <laughs> drinking and uh, doing mental math to flip this around. Um, I actually like the bottom on this one. Uh, this de this battle deck does have limited visibility in it, which is going to give some flexibility to get those taunts and the Mandalorians in if I need it. But uh, from the bottom on a battle lines deployment, I've got a ton of uh, flexibility uh, for line of sight blocking terrain to just park right in my deployment zone, or sorry, right outside my deployment zone, uh, and then scoot those guys all around. Uh, one of my favorite things to do on this map, especially with uh, jump units or essential cable units, is to just use those two big hills uh as uh to skirt around and just come flying over so i think that uh having them more on my side with the bottom here is is what i'd like to do zach what do you think uh, i think my picture must also be inverted because yeah <laughs> I, i'm agreeing with keegan here uh, i'd take that bottom side um because the the four deployments that i have uh, pretty much no matter which one you get because of the recon intel on the mandos you can be right up against that cliff face no matter which deployment you're at and get perfectly blocked line of sight from almost all angles definitely against these rebel dlts they're not going to be able to find you uh through that and then like on the other positions like advanced positions those two like big walls in the back are almost just perfect for like opening pot shots of dlts just to stop them from ever connecting uh so yeah i definitely go with the bottom side all right so I think I made a mistake when I actually pulled up this map for myself and had it inverted from everybody else that was looking at it. So we are going to take the corner that is opposite of the trenches. Um, we actually want to be pushing into that from the long side. Um, I tend to agree with that as well. With three mandos with rockets, it's a, a pretty open area that you can actually just bomb away on everybody. And should the tons get in to the opponent's lines, you've got a lot of freedom to basically walk to engagement to engagement and not have to worry about moving around terrain. So that's pretty good to get in there. And it probably is better if we're gonna go for some short sideboard edges. So let's flip over the battle cards for tonight. So tonight, um, Zach has brought a pretty dastardly <laughs> list of uh, battle cards and literally everything in here is killer for rebels and terrible for gun lines. So that's a good sign. We are playing bombing run, payload, recover the supplies, battle lines disarray and hemmed in, and war weary, limited visibility and supply drop. So everything great for blue player. Things are okay for red, but definitely not from the disadvantage. <clears throat> so Zach, you are blue player. You've got this killer bid. What is your first choice here? Uh, when I when I see these cards flip, my immediate reaction is that red player has to ban bombing run at some point. So I pretty much just lean more whenever I'm in this position of all good objectives of what deployment favors me the most on them. Uh, and I tend to think if they're getting rid of bombing run, I want to go to hemmed in. So I'll probably get rid of battle lines first because hemmed in with both payload and recover is just so favored the blue player on hemmed in that I think I easily just get rid of battle lines first and just keep banning all the way down there. Nick, do you tend to agree? Uh, yeah, I tend to agree. I'd probably eliminate battle lines. Um, I would definitely leave bombing run because if red leaves bombing run, that's a mistake. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, um, you know, War Weary doesn't affect uh, my list at all negatively, except the three naked rebel troopers. But honestly, they're looking at these objectives. They're going to be hiding behind line of sight the whole game. So they're not going to get shot a lot. Um, and yeah, so I guess I just eliminate bombing run because, or battle lines, eliminate battle lines, keep bombing run, um, go to disarray and see what red eliminates. Josh. Yeah, I can't argue with them here. Um, 
battle lines has to go uh, on on this uh, objective, mostly because uh, Disarray and Hemden seem way worse for the uh, opponents, Luke and Sabine. Uh, splitting their army isn't going to be good in any way at all. So yeah, I say let's cut battle lines, go towards Hemden, with the possibility that we might want to go for limited visibility as well. And Keegan. Uh, just to make it a little bit interesting, I, I'm going to uh, similar uh, end end state intent, but I would uh, kill Warrior here to try to force a mistake on the red player's part. Um, we know that uh, the red player is going to be scared of battle lines as well uh, with any of these uh, with any of these lists because uh, it's going to push it out. So I would wait, I, and and they definitely don't want limited visibility uh, either. Limited visibility. They've got two snipers. They've got all those DLTs. You take that away, and you get you can get the uh, tons in. Uh, s trying to knock them off balance by putting that decision right up front might be a tactic. I'm still going to end up eliminating uh, battle lines like you guys are, but I think I open with warry. Yeah, so we are going to kill battle lines for the first <laughs> one here. Um, it's pretty explanatory amongst the group here. Something that is to to note, um, especially with something like limited visibility. You know, with the Tons and three Mandos, even though Luke Skywalker's on the other side, you really don't care. Because if Luke comes forward, you're speed threeing away from him. He can't keep up with you, and you're just going to kill everything else. So getting closer to your opponent isn't a terrible thing. And if you shrink the table to a 3x3, three three, even if it gets stuck on Disarray, that's really not the worst thing in the world for that. So we are going to kill Battle Lines. So at the moment, going into the red player's turn, we're playing Bombing Run, Disarray, and War Weary. And Joshua, what is the red player going to do to respond? Uh, you have to get rid of Bombing Run. You don't want to cut War Weary and uh, get stuck on limited visibility. Bombing Run against uh, five uh, <laughs> Speed 3 units, yeah, that's that's just not going to happen. You have to cut Bombing Run. Any disagreement, Keegan? No, I'm glad I'm uh, near the top of the list on this one, so I don't have to make it interesting by disagreeing. 100% uh, Bombing Run on this one. Uh, Nick, bring us some personality, please. Uh, man. Well, um, I guess I can just eliminate uh, limited visibility here and then uh, eliminate bombing run next time. Um, so I'm going to disagree, and I'm going to eliminate limited visibility. You, you'd be able, you'd be able to do that if Mike actually listened to me last time. Uh, yeah. Where we really wasn't up right now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Bombing run. Yeah. Bombing run. yeah. Exactly. Yeah, looking at when the other list, half of their units are moving speed three, it just feels so bad to see bombing run first position. You just got to get rid of it. Yeah, bombing run is going to disappear here. That was a pretty easy cut. Um, one of the easiest ones we've had. You know, if you've got two tons with bombs, they're going to score like turns two and three, and now all of a sudden you have two full tauntaun units entering the field at like turn five and six for the end game. That's like a recipe to just lose to every single time. So let's get back to some tough decisions at least and go to the blue player second choice. And Nick, what do you want to do? We are playing Payload, Disarray, and War Weary. Get rid of War Weary. Okay. Uh, limited visibility is pretty helpful for Tauntauns and Mandalorians. So even though it helps Luke and, Luke and Sabine a little bit to an extent, but uh, yeah, I mean, he's got a uh, red player has a lot of range and blue doesn't. So get rid of uh, War Weary for limited visibility. How do you feel about that, Zach? Um, I'm going to disagree with that and definitely say you push towards hemmed in here because I think the Mando rockets, you don't want to get to the fringe case of Luke serving them and shooting your own units with them. Uh, and limited visibility is probably the only way that ever happens. And I think red players probably scared enough of War Weary with their four rebel troopers who are actually trying to do something in the game with their DLTs. Uh, and I think hemmed in is just so favored for payload and recover because you start at the center. Like on hemmed in, if they ban to recover the supplies, you can just no time for sorrows off a of recon mando and be basing the box turn one and just re and then picking it up and running away i think it just favors you so much on both of the objectives that are left that you just push to hemmed in and take it uh keegan how do you feel about that i like zach's arguments um whew, that, that that makes me think about it i was uh before he before he offered that i was 100 percent with nick get war we out there force red into that decision of do i have to do disarray or limited visibility uh or payload uh, I, I would hate all three of those, uh, and you all know how my, my feelings on payload. Um, I think that... Uh, oh, actually, you know what? Payload in uh, Hemden isn't too bad either. All right, I'm going to go with Zach on this one. 
<laughs> get, get rid of disarray. Uh, Joshua, change of heart. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think I was convinced here. Um, I was going to cut and go towards limited visibility, um, but I have a feeling that, um, and so gut feeling is I actually want to go limited visibility. However, I don't know what red is going to do here. I think disarray can be a little bit difficult for um, uh, on recover the supplies, especially with having Luke out there. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if red is going to go to recover the supplies or stay on payload. So I think I take the safe route and go hemmed in, which gives me the best advantage as uh, this Tons list. Um, so again, gut feeling, I want to go to limited viz, but my head says <laughs> I need to be safe and let's cut towards hemmed in. Yeah, so we are going to cut for hemmed in here, but there's a couple of little caveats that we didn't really touch on. So if you cut to limited visibility here, if the red player does get the final say, everything is still pretty good for blue, but red can force supply drop. And when you have two Jedi style units, such as Luke and Sabine, giving them access to medics, giving them access to marksmen and that such, um, you know, the stronger the unit, the better supply drop is. It's one of the reasons that clones love it. You really don't want to give the unit with the heavier tier, or sorry, the, the army with the heavier tier units that potential option. Yes, a medic is pretty good for your mandos, but when you've got a seven to eight health Luke Skywalker, it's even worse. And when that gets combined with disarray, you know, it's going to be a lot easier for Luke, Sabine, and your melee, their melee units to actually take advantage of yours in the smaller map size. Um, so in addition to everything that you guys said, I think those two points are kind of important to think about as well. So we're going to cut Disarray. And going into the Red Player's final cut, we have Payload, Hemmed In, and War Weary. And Keegan, what is the Red Player going to make as his final decision? Well, I'm, I'll stay true to form. I get rid of Payload. Uh, I think uh, Payload with, with Tons and Mandos to kind of create that base of, uh, base of force in the middle there. It's a lot of hit points, a lot of red defense die uh, that can just bog down the movement of the payload in the middle. Uh, recover, uh, Zach made a great point about the power of recover with this uh, Tawn list, the, um, that No Time for Sorrows get right onto that middle box. Uh, but I'm going to bring out my, my Elgin and Pathfinder's instincts here and go to recover, but don't go after the middle box. Start putting pressure on some of the safe boxes and try to win it that way. Josh, what do you think about that? Um, I'm actually going to cut War Weary here. The reason being is um, with those Mando rockets, I don't want him, especially since we're playing hemmed in, I don't want free shots on my Rebel Troopers and to suddenly be down three activations before the game has really even begun. Uh, I think the safest way to protect them is to cut and go limited visibility. I know that sounds terrible going up against Tauntauns and <laughs> um, some in the, the best got duelists, but uh, those rockets really have me a little bit freaked out here to have those rebel troopers just get wiped out, especially since I'm starting likely in the open in order to get the best uh, positioning for the payload. Uh, yeah, I'm going to cut and go limited visibility. And Zach? Uh, I'm going to disagree and say we red player passes here. Because uh, I think when you got to look at it, you got to think: Do you are do you fear losing your range four DLTs more than them losing their range four rockets? And I think you're more scared of losing your DLT shots than you are scared of them losing their rockets. Uh, and I think between the payload and recover, I just think that play of taking a box turn one on recover is super rough, considering the fact that you're playing hemmed in already and you don't have an R two unit to balance it out. You want to pick an objective where you can hopefully not force in a situation where you're already down on points and r2 just makes it worse so i think you pass and go payload war we were here does uh coordinated bombardment play into that thought uh no actually hmm because if you i could see making a case there um, but Leia probably isn't doing much most of the games because she's scared of luke and sabine both with sabers that probably almost one hitter so maybe she's staying back the whole game anyways and can still coordinate a bombardment and just wait out the limb viz and not care. Because I don't think that's a play you have to make turn one, like a clankers or something. So no, I still think you I still think you pass. Uh, Nick, what do you think? I I mostly agree with uh, Zach here. Um I don't I think playing recover the supplies is probably a bad idea, so I'm not even looking at cutting payload. Um I do cutting war weary, it's tough. Uh 
I'd like to not have to deal with that, and limited visibility is like uh, is is a thing that Tauntauns uh, like, uh, and I don't with range four and range five. Um, so I I think I I think my gut feeling is pass here. Play War Weary. Yeah, I'm gonna go. I forgot about the snipers. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna <laughs> cut. <laughs> I am gonna agree with Zach and Nick here, and we're gonna pass and go to War Weary. Um, I don't think Red Player really wants limited visibility for a couple of reasons. Like Zach mentioned at the end, we've got a couple snipers. You don't want to take that away. Um, you don't want to take the DLTs away. And even though you're down in activation, you potentially do have an opportunity to kill R2. Hemmed in is a pretty open setup. So if the blue player makes a mistake and hangs R2 out or R2 gets drawn from the stack early, you can potentially... Maybe turn one or two, get some shots in there, and eliminate that victory point. You take away your opportunity to do that whatsoever if you get a limited visibility. And you can't go to recover the supplies, because if they're starting on the box and they can claim move, where you have to throw a one pip to guarantee to go first, you're in a hell of a lot of trouble. So we're going to pass here. And going into turn one, we will be playing Payload, Hemmed In, and War Weary. So Josh, who do you think wins based on our turn zero flip over? Uh, this is going to require a lot of luck from uh, Luke to get in there. It's going to require some great Son of Skywalker turns if he can get there. Some really good. Uh, this particular list, I do have you serve you serve your master well, which could uh, swing um, the game some if you can use that on one of their Mandalorians and get a lot of damage off, but. Uh, this is an uphill battle. I think it's going to be a pretty traditional deployment. Um, red player is likely starting out close to in the open in order to get the best positioning on their payload. Uh, this doesn't look like a ga good game for red player, and I think it's going to be over before it begins. Ian. Yeah, it was a. Uh, uh, if I was the red player on this and, and this particular set of battle cards flipped up in this order, uh, I, I'm I'm already starting to think about what my what my mid round drink is going to be. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, there, I, Joshua covered a, a lot of the great uh, possible options to go after it, uh, but yeah, I think uh, I think this is uh, sorry. Blue players blue player has been uh, on the forward foot for the entire time so far, and we'll hold it hold it going forward. And Nick, I couldn't read my notes for a second. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't. I don't disagree. Um, I think that this is Blue's game to uh, win. You would have to like. You serve your master well, and Son of Skywalker are cards that can like. They can really like change the game, but uh, you would need some really good. You would need some really good plays from those cards. Um, so I, I think Blue takes this. Zach, you've got the blue list. You've got the yeah, probably I'm... better turn zero. What happens? <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm super happy sitting in this scenario because I think the only way I can ever find a reason for red winning is if Luke somehow beats a brawl against five other melee units that are just gonna eat him alive. Because you don't because turn two these cards are probably meeting each other because you're just putting them at the pinnacle of your deployment zones mm -hmm. and the rebels aren't gonna have enough time to like plink away tons or mando models and it's just gonna be bad news when Luke's in melee with two tons and a unit of mandos just beating the crap out of him. Yeah, I think Luke's going to get the shit kicked out of him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think the only way that Red really has an opportunity here is if Luke is able to leverage Force Push as well as Serve Your Master to slow down the bomb cart for a turn and move his forward. However, the flip side of that is now Serve Your Master is not used in an offensive position because you're just moving something. Maybe you can get a charge off on a Tawn, but that's only two units and they've got to be positioned the right way. Um, I think it's a pretty uphill battle. The blue player probably has to make some major mistakes, leave the R2 exposed, like I mentioned, overcommit a Tawn or a Mando early, and get some poor dice rolls. So it's possible, but I don't think it's very likely if your opponents are evenly matched. So I would give the edge to blue in this, this turn zero. So before we jump into the list critique, because I really want to talk about this list, I have a, a quick little segment for you guys. I'm going to throw out a percentage for an over-under on what percentage of Legion games are over after turn zero cards and take like 10 to 15 seconds to say over or under and why you think so are we but i would uh, say competitive and competitive and casual or just our competitive yeah. ones <laughs> oh you know yeah. let's, let's let's go competitive competitive, competitive legion games. games i'll throw this percentage out there so i'll make this nice and clear but 82 and a half percent of competitive legion games are decided when battle cards are done let's start with josh 
Uh, that seems a little high. I would go under. Actually, gut feeling I would have said about forty percent are decided. Um, now we're counting. Well, are we counting turn zero, including list building and all of that as well? Yeah. So by the time that the battle cards have flipped over, the three are set, and you're about to start deployment. So I I think the clone versus empire matchup does throw that off a little bit. So I'm gonna go more fifty five percent. But I think given some of our games that we've seen um, with a lot of the faction splitting, I'm going to go with it's probably about 55%. Keegan. Uh, I'm going to uh, continue Josh Joshua's impulse and go further down. I, I still think even with that clone empire kind of matchup, I still think we're down in the 40, 45% range. Uh, there's huge advantages that are had in a ton of the games after turn zero. But if there's one thing that uh, I believe about this uh, this game it's that uh, there's a, also a ton of opportunities to make mistakes and capitalize on those mistakes throughout the game. Um, so, yeah, I think it's, I think it's uh, definitely under and, and more closer to 40 45%. And it's only partially because I have to have hope that this game is not decided after turn zero. <laughs> Zach, what do you think about that? I was actually, when you were saying it in my head, I was thinking like probably 80%, and then you won 80%. <laughs> um, I think about 80% of games are definitely decided after, like, I think this game's over. Like, I think if both players play it well, this game's pretty much over at that point. And that 20% is just what the dice come up as. Uh, I think there's maybe a couple matchups where it isn't, where it's more dice dependent, like when you're just two gun lines shooting at each other kind of thing. Um, but in scenarios, because I only play Rebels, I think most of my games end 80% of the time after turn zero. And I know what the to and I know what the cards are. Nick, how do you feel? You've played Rebels for quite some time, and I know we've played Rebels against each other competitively. <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure I lost our game at Nova turn zero. But... You did. <laughs> uh -huh. Ouch. No shame. I, 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 I admit it. Um, I think it's more than I think it's more than fifty percent, but I don't think it's eighty-two percent. Um, there's a. It's still a still a game of dice. Um, and unfortunately, sometimes dice can roll one way or the other. But um, yeah, I mean, a lot of play. This is a lot of players make mistakes. Turn zero. Um, it happens. That's why we're here, I guess. Um, <laughs> but yeah, all right. I'm just gonna go ahead. I'll go ahead and say seventy percent. Okay. So I would say the the majority of us here think that it's at least forty five. You know, basically half or more games are decided after turn zero. So. I threw out a number to pull out my inner Tim and, uh, you know, try and make a hot take. So I'm glad at least one person agreed with me. I don't feel like I'm out on the island there. So let's get into the uh, the list critique for tonight. So we're gonna only going to talk about Zach's list, which, just to go over real quick, is Leia with Strict Orders, Three Naked Rebels, some Loaded Mandos. All three of them have the Best Guide Duelist, Tenacity, Recon Intel, and the Jetpack Rockets, and two Tons with Tenacity as well. So pretty gnarly 10 activation, 20-point uh, bid rebel list here and keegan when you're looking at the list what do you like about it what do you dislike what would you change or is it pretty much what you would do yourself uh i like this list a lot and uh what i dislike about it is how much i like it uh <laughs> we we know that i'm a i'm a, b a bit of an off meta player I've, I've been playing you know obsessing over Jin and pathfinders for some time so to see a, a naked r2 naked rebel troopers and tenacity tons just feels like the the uh the purest degeneracy of a rebel list these days that being said this is a this this is a cool list i love how it gets the 10 activations uh i've been playing leia a little bit more and i really think that she's underplayed right now i like her getting back into the game i think her having uh command card targets for three sets of mandos and the tons is is really powerful there's just a lot of ways that you can just overwhelm your opponent uh with this list by by moving in you can either push five uh, powerful melee units in all at once to swarm. You could push the taunts in with three rounds of jetpack rockets to cover them. Lots of different things you can do. I haven't had the pleasure of playing with the uh, best guy duelist uh, much yet. I've been, I've been screwing around with Clan Ren, uh, but I my gut tells me if I'm going to run that, three of them is going to be is going to be a punch. Yeah, that's a lot of melee potential, <laughs> and uh, it's just a lot of wounds. It's yeah. a lot of wounds with high quality dice. Yeah, uh, Joshua. How do you feel about the list? Uh, so I started off playing Sabine and Clan Ren. Then I switched to uh, Mandalorians with um, Ursa and Tristan. And one of the reasons why we warned everyone last week uh, about putting on this uh, or submitting your list because they might be stolen 
is uh, for next YBTL, which all list submissions will be in by the time this releases on Monday. Um, I'm stealing this uh, and, uh, because this is a really good list. And uh, Zach, I think you've done a great job putting this together. Um, and there's a few things that I would change. It's interesting that you said 80% is determined turn zero, which is why you took a 20 point bid. Um, I like to shave it down a little bit more. I think 15 is as low as you can go. Uh, but I actually had a few questions for you, Zach, on this. Um, just two things I wanted to say if you considered them, because there were th changes that I was considering making. What do you think about smokescreen and comm relay on this in order to give either the Mandalorians or the Tauntauns an extra movement? Yeah, because I think that three pip slot with Leia's three pips probably the worst card you have in your deck. Um, but I think just as this kind of game proved, R2 is not going to be near your units. He's going as far away from everything as possible. And I think there's scenarios that it comes up where you're probably going to have him close by. But I think if you ever lose your bid and you ever get outbid by like two points when you're 85, it's automatically not worth it. It's automatically not worth it. And so that plays into my second one is I was wondering if 3PO and Distract had any um, possibility of being successful here, but I guess if R2 is not going to be near at all and the fact that that's going to raise you to probably, I think Mike and I were playing around it and we got 789, I believe. Um, so 3PO and Distract is probably not going to play much of a role here. So yeah, I, I like the list. There's not really much I'd change. Tenacity is great on those Mandos. One goes down, and actually your dice don't really take a lot of punishment from that. Yeah. So melee Nick. dice, at least. Yeah. <laughs> Nick, how do you feel about it? Yeah, um, it's super degenerate. If I really wanted to run degenerate rebels right now, I would definitely look at that. I do own three... Uh, I do own a lot of Mandalorians. Um, a lot of them are painted. It's definitely <laughs> something that I would try. Um, uh, yeah, um, looks like a lot of fun. I love Leia too. Um, I'm with Keegan. I want to see more Leia out there. Um, uh, you know, she's great. Um, R2, the best 35 points in the game probably. Um, I'm I'm sort of on the DLT Rebel Trooper train right now. Yeah. But uh, you know, if you're running a skew list like this, like you know. Sure, take three naked rebel troopers, 120 points and three activations. It's, it's fine. Um, I would probably consider trying to get comms relay and smoke screen in there for R2, though. I'm with Josh on that. Otherwise, though, it looks like a lot of fun and silly. Yeah, so I actually hate DLTs, so I really like the fact that there's nothing shoehorned in here. I think they <laughs> suck. They melt. I had terrible experiences with them. <laughs> uh, Nick, you better not bring this tomorrow when we play, because I'm going to be real pissed if that's what I show up and see on the other side. <laughs> um, now, I actually really like the 20-point bid, and truthfully, I, I think that Save Our Skins is actually, it's not a great card. I'm not saying it's good. But in a list like this, I think there's a potential that you can actually catch somebody out, because they might be expecting Smokescreen. They might not really think that that card is useful. But if you are already up in activation, we're going into, like, turn three, now you might be up two or three and two of your opponents are engaged with you so you're kind of up like you know three to four activations essentially if Leia is able to like move and shoot something and then all of a sudden you can move another mando before they have a chance to respond to that you can almost alpha strike halfway through the game and take something off the table that your opponent didn't think about so if they have an r2 on the other side if they have a rebel trooper sitting on the other side all of a sudden they get shot by leia or well, you know leia takes a shot and then all of a sudden your mando or your taunt moves and they hit that target that all of a sudden was safe and now isn't because you're going back to back. So in addition to the 20 point bid for what we see with the battle cards here, I actually think her three pip has a little bit of play with something like this. Used to see it back in the day with fleet troopers. This is just fleet troopers to a whole nother level. But uh, now I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how uh, this actually does in the wild. So uh, Zach, get your game streamed when you actually get to use this. So, oh, <laughs> I very I'll much try. like to I'll watch try. that. But thank you everybody for joining us tonight. Um, we are more than happy to have Zach on tonight with our user list, so we'll be getting that clan run out to him tonight. Thanks for coming on, being a good sport about any kind of critiques with the list. <laughs> I hope you had a good time. Thank you for joining us, everybody. We'll see you in a couple weeks, and we'll have Tim back on full-time with us to just start our Imperial v. Imperial Mirrors. Have a great night. <laughs>